Genesis chapter 50 and verse number 20 on today to establish a premise that we've been working on. We've been talking about prayerfully growing forward in our life, looking at different principles that will help us help us to grow, help us to be better, help us to step into the season that we're in and become even more by using the things that God has given us in his word principally and prayerfully applying them in our life. Genesis 50 and verse number 20 gives us another principle out of the life of Joseph, one in which you and I can see the significance, the benefit, and the blessing of the notion of change. Change is a blessing for us. Je uh, Joseph's life demonstrates just that. Listen to the text. You planned something bad for me, but God produced something good from it in order to save the lives of many people, just as he's doing today. Again, Genesis 50 and verse number 20. One of the things that this text does is it encourages us to embrace the changes in life to grow forward in your calling. Change is a strength for our character and our calling. Arnold Bennett makes the statement, any change, even a change for the better though, is always accompanied by discomfort. And Joseph's life, the patriarch Joseph, reminds us that he is one whose life was filled with change. You see him moving from moment after moment after moment, and, and that that episodic kind of change in his life demonstrates to us that that's the nature of what change is. It is an ongoing reality in our life that we cannot escape. It, the one constant in this reality is change. Joseph goes from his father's house, uh, the patriarch Jacob, to the pit, to Potiphar's house, to prison, to the palace, to Pharaoh's house, and then finally he's a policymaker at the end of his life. But while he's going through all of that, his life demonstrates the ongoing mantra that change is inevitable. However, growth is optional, and we want to make sure that as we see change, that we make sure and grab a hold of the beauty of what it means to grow even in the midst of things that change. There are several things we can learn about change that will bless our ability to prayerfully go grow forward in life. Number one, it is constant. Change is constant. Let me say again, change is inevitable. Growth, however, is optional. In fact, we need to embrace the fact that if we do not change, we don't grow. And if you don't grow, you aren't really living. That's the nature even of the Christian walk. We step into following God, following Christ through the mandate that some things have to change. You have to let go of your old self and embrace the new character of Christ. You have to let go of old thinking, old habits, old behavior over the process of time and embrace the character of Christ. Some things change and you see it even in the nature of how God is growing your character. How God has you right now in your walk with God is not how you were years ago. For some of us, you already know that just the smallest thing would set you off and you'd be angry and frustrated and want to slap the fire out of somebody. But now you pray. Now you forgive. Now you give someone time. You, you are patient as you go through what you go through. That's the nature of embracing one reality, taking off one reality to accept another. Things change. Change is a constant thing. So it's not foreign to us. It's a part of our walk with God. It is constant. But then number two, it is curriculum for life. Change is the, the thing that, that teaches you and I. Joseph's life was filled with opportunity to use the things that he had learned in his last season to effectively navigate his current season. That's the nature of change and growing with change. Let me share something with you. God will allow the things that you have gone through to become the strength you need for what you're moving to. 
So every tear, every frustrating moment, every headache, every late night study, every bout of faith will become a resource pool for the new assignment that's given to you when things change. And hear me, they will change. Know this, that no pain in your life is wasted if you learn how to point that thing towards becoming a better you. God will allow every part of what you go through and go to to be something that en enhances the nature of who you are. Change is constant, number one. Change is curriculum for life, number two. But let me give you number three. Change, it challenges you to see. I love how in this text, Genesis chapter 50 and verse number 20, we see Joseph at the end part of his life, but he makes a statement that may be a window into how he was thinking the entire time. Remember, he makes the statement, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good in order that many lives might be, many, the many lives of his people might be saved. Could it be that Joseph the entire time was sharing with us how he was thinking and seeing these these different episodic life changes, this abrupt move from being comfortable to being thrown in a pit, from being thrown in a pit to being sold into slavery, sold into slavery, being attacked by Potiphar's wife, after that result, being put in prison, after prison, in the palace, from the palace, to Pharaoh, from Pharaoh, to being second in command, making policy. Could he see that all of these different things was really God navigating and helping him to move through the course of life? And watch what he does. It challenges challenges you in the midst of what you're going through to see things. Open your eyes, open your eyes and see life differently. There are several things that change will challenge you to see. Number one, it will help you to see what's ahead. When things change, it immediately makes you say, well, what's next? What's ahead? Learn how to look ahead when things change so that you can have the perspective that God has. Number two, see your current status. What's going on with me? How am I right now? Really, a self-check is some of the best things in the world that you can do. And that leads you to number three, see your need for growth. What do you need to work on? What do you need to get better? Where do you need to check yourself? Where are some areas that you know you're in deficit in? Are you wasting money? Are you wasting time? Are you wasting your, your relational status? What in the world is going on with you? Are you sitting here sulking? Are you having a pity party? Have you sat in the same spot for hours after hours and done nothing? Are you saying you want to get better, but you ain't doing no moving? What's going on with you. Number four, see the places of fear. What you afraid of? What are you scared of? Why are you, you scared to step out and do what God would have you to do? Who are you afraid to have a conversation with? What is it that you're afraid to do? Are you afraid somebody's going to turn you down? Are you afraid that, that you may be accepted? Are you afraid that you might get the job? Are you afraid that doing those things will benefit you? What is your fear? See your places of fear. See your faith quakes. Where is it that you doubt that God is actually active? See those places where you're sitting there wondering, God, what's going on with you? Those are faith quakes. Those are, those are foundational shaking points where you are wondering where the hand of God is. See your potential, number six. Seeing your potential is absolutely essential because you need to know you've got the capacity to do some things. Remember this about yourself, that God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You've got the ability. You need to see the potential in yourself. You didn't do all of that schooling, all of that reading, all of that time. You didn't serve that long. You didn't wash that many those those floors. You didn't do all of the stuff that you've done. You didn't cook all them dishes and everything else to not have the potential to do more. You've got the ability, the capacity, the potential, infinite potential to do even more that you're doing. You have to see that when change presents itself. You need to number seven, see the obstacles that you need to overcome. There may be some things that you have to get over though. There may, need to, there may need to be some, some logistical things that you need to do. You may need to do the paperwork. You may need to have the conversation. You may need to let go of some people. You may need to adjust your wardrobe. You may need to do some things that are different right now in your capacity. But face those obstacles, overcome those obstacles, and step into what change is affording you. And then number eight, see, the, see whether or not it's time for something new. When change presents itself, you've got to see whether or not God 
God is legitimately putting you on a new assignment. I have a really good friend, David Yasko, who shared with me years ago that when he's dealing with the different seasons and the different changes in his life, he makes this one self-affirming mantra. I will be here as long as it's good enough for the both of us. Now, watch what he means by that. His point in making that statement is, I'm not going to be somewhere that hurts me, and I'm not going to be somewhere that hurts you. I'll be where I need to be as long as it's good enough for the both of us. Change, many times, is where God allows us to see him in every episode of our life and allow that change to push us towards growth. And notice number four, change is conditioning you for a higher level. Joseph's life is a picture of potential being actualized. God wants the same for us. Growth and comfort cannot coexist. In, in, in any given moment, we have two options when we deal with the changes that come our way. We can step in for growth or we can step back for safety. But here's the thing, when you and I don't embrace it, when we don't step forward and lean in and accept the fact that this change is a part of our reality, I want to grow through it, I want to grow within it, then you'll never become who God wants you to be. You never change your life until you step out of your comfort zone. Change begins at the end of your comfort zone, and your comfort zone may very well need to, may, may very well need to be the place where change ought to take place. So let me share something again. In conclusion, Change is painful, but there's nothing as painful as staying stuck somewhere you don't belong. Hear me on this. You don't belong. I don't belong. We don't belong in a stagnant, mediocre, mundane existence. God wants us to have abundant life. So we have to embrace the change that comes our way. Change is a part of our life. It's constant. It's a curriculum for our life. It challenges us to see. It conditions us for a higher level. And God wants us to grow forward through embracing the dynamics of what change is all about. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, we thank you, and we bless you for being our God. We praise you for allowing us the privilege of seeing you in the capacity that you deserve to be seen. Thank you for the example we see in Joseph. Thank you for his life. Thank you, Father, for the pages of inspiration that remind us that change is very much a part of our life. Help us to see it, Father, in its potential and its ability to grow us into your character. Help us, Lord God, to step in and become people who recognize that this is a constant part of our reality. It is something that will challenge us. It is something that will grow us. It is something that will condition us. But Lord, we will look more like you. We will think more like you. We will become more like you. We will embrace our reality in such a way that you get glory and your name will be represented in every season that we're in. Father, use us to be a blessing to those that are around us. Use us to be agents that will help others to know you deeper and to walk with you more intimately. Bless our world. Bless our horizon. Bless the season that we're in. Bless us, Lord God, to embody who you are so that we can become more like King Jesus in any context that we're in. We love you. We bless you. We kiss at your feet. Use us up doing good. And when you're done, bring us home in Jesus' name. As we together say, amen. Listen, let's embrace what God has for us so that we can be a people who represent him in any season that we're in. I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you. Look at here, y'all. If you're tired of the devil pressing us down, come on, y'all. Come on, it's time to fight. Well, I know, I know it seems like the devil. Seems like he's winning sometimes. But I came here to let you know that the devil is alive. God is true. God said, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, Right. Go get your armor. Go get your armor and fight the fight. Uh -huh. Go get your helmet, get your sword, and get your shield. It's time to stand. Stand and do God's will. Yeah, everything. Everything is gonna be okay. Yeah. Look out, the enemy is on his yeah. way. Yeah. Watch out now. Come on. But with God, everything. I came to tell you. You don't have nothing to worry about. Just keep your faith in the master. I need a witness. Marissa, Philip, sleep. Everything is going to be all right. all right. Though your day seems dark as night. Satan's strong, but God is stronger. So keep the faith and you got to keep pressing on. Everything is going to be okay. God has promised he will make the way. God before us, he can't destroy us. 
stand tall, the victory is won. What can separate us from God's love? So tribulation on his throne, persecution and goodness. Oh no, we're more than conquerors. We're not afraid of being in Come on. Let the devil in the mind. Tell him. Devil, we're ready. Come on. Come on. Come on, devil. We're ready for you now. Soldiers of Christ, come on. Devil is over. The body of Christ. Oh my God.